Hey guys, it's the Stick Figure Historian and we're back with our Viking Invasion. So, in the year 871, the Vikings attacked the Kingdom of Wessex, and the town of Reading was soon under their control. From this stronghold, they sent out a foraging party to collect supplies for their staying campaign. And I don't think the supplies included potato chips. Did they even have Pringles back then? I don't know. Anyway, it wasn't going to be an easy little raiding expedition for the Vikings. The local ruler of Berkshire, which back then he would be called the Elder Man of Berkshire, had gathered a force together to stop the Vikings. So, Redding is in Berkshire, so it's in his division that he rules over. So this Elderman and his men surprised and attacked the foraging party and defeated them, sending the survivors running back to Redding, which they still kept as a base. As soon as King Ethelred and his brother received word of the invasion, they rallied their men together. Four days later, they came up to the aid of the Berkshire men. The enemy drew up their army a ways outside the gates of Reading, where the men of Wessex came pouring down upon them. The assault was fierce, and in short order the Vikings fell back in confusion and rushed back towards the town for protection. Ethelred's forces pursued them with triumphant shouts, sure that the victory would be theirs. But it was a trap. Only a small part of the Vikings had been sent out of the town to fight. The rest had stayed behind, waiting. These now rushed out upon the disordered Saxons, killing many and turning the victory into defeat. Thus ended Alfred's first battle. But though the Battle of Reading had been a failure, the King of Wessex was not entirely defeated. Just four days later, he was ready to do battle again. The invaders and defenders met this time on a hill. The exact location of this coming battle, I am sorry to say, is unknown. All we can tell for sure is that it was fought in the general area of Berkshire. But many believe that it was fought on a particular hill in the Shire called the White Horse Hill, which is a strange mound with a legendary horse figure etched into the top of it. The Vikings stood at the top of this hill, wherever it may have been. They were split into two companies. One of these divisions was commanded directly by two of the Viking kings, Baxegd and Hafton, and the other unit was commanded by several earls. The men of Wessex drew up at the foot of the mound, also divided into two units. Ethelred's force faced that led by the Viking kings, and Alfred's was to meet that of the earls. Just before the battle began, Ethelred called a priest to his tent to say mass. And for those of you who don't know, Mass is a ceremony performed by Catholics. Basically, it's their version of celebrating the Lord's Supper, where Jesus gave bread and wine to his disciples just before he was crucified. But instead of using bread, they have this little wafer thingy. Kind of like a cookie? Well, maybe it's more like a cracker. I don't know. Anyway, they think that after the priest performs this ceremony that this little cookie cracker thingy and the wine literally turns into the body and blood of Christ. And if you eat and drink them, you will receive God's grace. But this is clearly against what the Bible teaches. God says that he will give us grace if we simply repent of our sins and believe on him. Not if we do some special ceremony. Anyway... While his brother was thus occupied, Alfred's army drew up beneath the hill in battle formation. The plan was to wait until Ethelred was ready, and then strike together. But suddenly, the Vikings began to advance down the hill towards Alfred. The prince was now faced with a desperate choice. He could call a retreat and run away, or do battle without his brother and half the army. He chose the second option. The Saxons formed a shield wall, Alfred himself forming up in the ranks with them, as was the custom of the princes and kings of Wessex. Together, they met the enemy charge like rocks on a sea coast. So well and solidly did those warriors stand that they even began to push their foes back up the hill. But their brave efforts could not last forever. They were severely outnumbered, and the shield wall slowly began to weaken. But just as it looked as if Alfred and his men were to be swallowed up in their foes, Ethelred finally came to their rescue. The Vikings panicked at the appearance of this new division, 
for they had not expected it, and were in no way prepared to meet an attack from both sides. They fled, leaving many of their leaders dead on the field behind them, including King Baxeg. For a few weeks there was peace, and the people of Wessex rejoiced. But the war wasn't over yet. Two more battles were fought, and the Saxons did not fare so well this time. And to make matters worse, Ethelred died. Alfred, the last of the sons of Ethelwulf, was now king. King of a troubled nation filled with ravaging foreign invaders.